Today, Precarious plays Endless Legend. I think that that is a sign of overdevelopment on my part. Mm-hmm. It's a problem with a small kind of issue. What? Well, I'm pretty sure that Yith is already our largest city, especially because it has two extra, it has two bonus tiles. Yeah. From the, um, the wonders, mm-hmm. the legendary buildings. But despite that, it's making its next, uh, its ne- next district in the shortest amount of time. <laughs> but I think I'm just going to roll with it. I'm just going to keep at it and maybe, uh, ooh. Yeah, I'm going to sneak one of these in right after. Ooh, I'm actually going to flip that so that way we can have the benefits ooh, of it yeah. straight away. I'm going to ease off on production and, geez, go go for dust because it's the winter. Mm-hmm. Is that still going to be four? Is that going to be four no matter what? Yeah, that's fine. Just full. It's just, oh, boy. Uh, what are the chances that I can meaningfully impact that? Well, you did have two to spare. And you know what? It's going to be... It's going to be boosted pretty soon anyway. Mm-hmm. It's fine. Okay. Uh, what is that, like six extra points? Yeah, six extra points of science. I think if there's one thing the show, doing this show for such a long time, has taught me about myself, mm-hmm. I am an unwell person. Because I was <laughs> about to I was about to start today being like, oh, man... It's going to be a slow session because, you know, the weather's changing and it's everything. The trees and the flowers are going crazy outside. Uh. And it's just the the pollen is getting to me. And it's just like it feels like half the time. Half Actually, the time. half the It's always either oh, I've come down with something or, oh, there's a massive epidemic <laughs> outside or uh, the, the the weather is either now too cold or too hot relative to what we were having before. Mm-hmm. It's always some crap. It's tripping me up. Dang, these meat suits. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is this... No, I'm not ready to part with that. Don't have that yet. What is the next major faction quest? Right, I don't 100% trust this one. Yeah? What are we supposed to be doing? We are supposed to have a... Does it have to be hero-led? I guess not. We need to talk to a village Mm -hmm. in in Mm Intai here, which I'm about to... You know what? I don't want to accidentally, like, fail it or something. Why are oh. you worried about that? Or no, I was going to move in here, wasn't I? I thought so, yeah, because of the, um, what is it? Platinum? Blue triangle. Titanium and glass steel, and it has, uh, two new luxury resources, and it's anomaly rich. Some of that you can also say about this one. Yeah, but I don't think... It's a little more conservative. I don't think that we were necessarily going to not get that one eventually, but I think Savya was next. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then we should probably, as soon as we have sort of stabilized those new towns, Mm -hmm. we should rush to grab these and sort of fill out this continent. Yeah. So that way everybody knows... That, Who's the big boss yeah. of this outer heaven? <laughs> How many more turns? I'm I'm just like, I'm looking towards the finish line. Now. The maximum turn count for this game, I think, is 150. Oh, okay, that's quite a ways. Uh, not not especially. Um, especially because. The, that's the absolute maximum. Yeah. That's the, you've run out of time to win or lose. So now we're just going to grade you based on points. Mm-hmm. Which I don't like because we're behind on points. By four. We could, 
actually go beat them up, bully them, destroy one of their towns, and it would drop their point total, I think, below ours. All right. Now, this might seem a little silly to involve the settler in this battle, but I think it's going to be okay. It certainly looks like it's going to be okay. I don't think that they would go out of their way to destroy... Ah, they are ranged, though. You know what I'm going to do? Like, this is... This feels like a bit of an inconvenience. Hold on. Let me just very quickly grab one of these. I think this, just is in will, case. this will still probably take less time. Yeah, see, that took no time. Okay, and then auto battle. Okay. We no. got it. They it's were destroyed, good. and our settler is entirely healthy. Okay. See? And it's only because you saved that it happened that way. <laughs> oh, yeah, they would have just destroyed... Outright, they would have been like, no, I will die to save these soldiers. Yeah, they would find their sudden underdog strength and be like, listen, I know what, I know that you are 50 times stronger than me and the meter says this, but you know what? <laughs> Damn your meters. Mm hmm. I will fight for what I believe in. Against all odds. Did you know that our roaming army has a feat called Against our odd, All Odds, which. So it, when your meter is past 20%, it'll flip it to your side. And and then you end up with the opposite results. Actually, you know what? This is, I don't think that this is the right kind of game for that. This but it feels, would be cool. This feels more like a, like something that you would see in like an Etrian Odyssey. Mm-hmm. With like their farmer class, I think some of them. Yeah. They have like, like an actual just farmhand can come on journeys with you. Yeah. Oh. Uh, it feels like it would be more appropriate in a game like that, but it would be, it would be kind of cool, or like tact, uh, ogre battle or tactics ogre, uh -huh. where it's like, oh yeah, you can get a really powerful generalist unit. You just have to have a settler kill an enemy combatant. <laughs> uh -huh. They just turn it, they morph, they metamorphosize into into like this wanderer, mm -hmm. this wanderer unit. So it's a little hard to decide where to set up shop just because it's winter, so the values are skewed. Oh. But I think between the happiness there and the food output, despite it being cold right now. Oh, I think the food. Okay. I don't know. What are we lower on, food or happiness? Food, well, that's right? that's irrelevant. It's always it's always like something. Every town you want to have all the things. Generally, you can normally like later in the game you can specialize and be like. This is going to be the science capital, and it's going to get the science legendary building, and it's going to get uh, all of the, the science-related stuff. Does food make production easier? In a roundabout way. I, they're all interconnected. I know, but... So that's why... Dust and science are, like, the most global. Mm-hmm. Uh, but every town you kind of want... Food or food and production. It's just that you can fix happiness once you have enough production. You know what? To start with, though, what am I doing? I'm just going to put it here because then I can just make the next tile right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm going to be losing one exploitation because of that impassable mountain range anyway. Yeah. Let me think about where I would want to put it overall, though. So one, two, three, four. four. And then I'll get one of those, or I could go, oh, that's pretty good. I could go straight across. No, that's that's no good. Which anomalies do I want hmm. in the end? Three, four. They don't always have to be perfectly little triangular shaped towns, but Probably just gonna miss out on that one. Mm. Enough fanning around. Okay. I've made my decision. I need to just remember that we're on a such a low difficulty that it doesn't really matter. <laughs> anyway. Don't like that. Why is that?
Expansion disapproval. Yeah, but I mean, calm down, guys. Trust me. You're going to like what happens next. <laughs> it's fine. Because I still have... Whoop, you know what? I should double check. Yeah, I still got boosters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, you know, you guys are going to... It's going to be good. You're gonna, it's going to be put exciting. put in a mall. We're going to do some parks. We're going to have some eateries. It's going to be fine. We're going to put an awesome bat hanger. We're going to put... We're going to install extra cliffs. Extra caves for bats to hang. It'll be great. Pretty sure at least one of those was racist. Pretty sure the cave thing was too far. Because, like... Yeah, are they not cave bats? Oh, gee, I wonder. I wonder... Well, well... I mean, they look, <laughs> the houses could they look be. like they could, silos that you would go hang out in. They could be doing anything in there. I mean, you can have house bats. Actually, they're kind of a problem sometimes. People get them in their houses and then they get mad and they kill them. And I'm like, no, just put just put grates over the just get them out. Besides, you're not supposed to kill bats just in case anyone was wondering because they're endangered. Are they? A lot of species are, yeah. Because what do bats need? Lots of bugs and space and wooded areas to hang out in. You know? At the risk of being a total downer, what isn't? Am I right? Mm -hmm. Am I right? Mm -hmm. What's not in. Uh, no, I mean. Bugs. But by volume? Eh, forget it. Bugs are fine. Certain birds are doing a little too well in some areas. <laughs> you, you, are you talking about the grackles again? You and your grackles. Look. They are not... They are too... They... It's literally called an invasive species, and it is that because it puts pressure on existing populations. And they just... They just fly down and eat everything. They just swarm over and eat everything. It's like a bunch of flying rats. Just fly in, just eat, eat, eat. Like, one time... It's the volume. Well, more than once. I've seen this happen many times. But one time it happened outside my house. They'll just, like... I'm talking, like, two, three hundred birds just, like, descend and eat everything available until it's gone, and then they leave. It's crazy. And then all of the local birds are like, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> Miss, could you put something in the bird feeder for us? <laughs> we're, we're starving. I would like some suet, please. <laughs> I have a house here. <laughs> I think that my people need to... Okay. Yeah. That's a good sign. Whenever you are looking to break out the bread and circuses. Mm-hmm. Yep. What? Wait, what? What did I miss? Oh, this oh, there are literal... Disapproval. Okay, there are literal bread and circuses. I see. Huh, <laughs> that's funny. I think I still got a lot of overhead. I'm not in a war. I mean, like, that's the problem with preparing for wars is it's like you gotta invest in some of it early otherwise you're gonna be uh, it's gonna be too late yeah you'll know? be scram you'll be scrambling but i think that this yeah be fine. like somebody will be like wait which end of this stick is supposed to be sharp <laughs> like <laughs> okay and then wait hold on. no the sharp part you put it in the ground to brace it and then you guide the opponent you ask them nicely to come walk towards you and then you pull it back and then you let it go and it thwacks <laughs> oh, yeah, them yeah. in the face yeah <laughs> that's how it works right and then it's like, oh no, you sweet, lovable goofballs. We're going to run over all of your cities. 
Uh, oh, but he's a hero. You know what I think I might do? Yeah, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to send our lore keeper to the new baby town. Mm -hmm. And I think he's going to get credit for all of these. <laughs> awesome. It feels very much like the, the sort of like father-in-law style of of management, though. Mm -hmm. He's really just going to stand with a can. Nearby and yeah, point. Uh, well, that, that goes over there. Got to straighten that up. Yeah. Looking good. Yep. Good job. Yeah. Bears in the cooler. Job's done. The... Oh, man. I love thinking about cultures that, like, skip technology that we feel is obvious, you know? It's so interesting. And I love playing, like, it, it used to be an accident, but after a while, um, like, I would play and, like, forget to invent stuff on purpose just to see what, what would happen. Yeah. And I, I just love thinking about that because, like, maybe it doesn't make sense for your society to have paper, you know? <laughs> like, why do you need it? Like, what is it for? We got clay. We got metal. What do we need the paper for? We went directly to touch screens. Forget your paper, you know? <laughs> We're gonna skip your paper. Uh, the last time I played Civ 6, I think, is the number we're up to. Yeah. The last time we played, or I played Civ 6, I um, saw how much damage coal was doing to the environment just by looking at um, what my, my opponents were doing. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's no good. Oh, that's awful as well. No, 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 no. What are you guys doing? How many... Five? Ooh, that's expensive, but... No, just give me more ice shell. I got minus one dust per person on cities. Are you guys trying to spike my <laughs> the wheel I haven't invented yet? <laughs> oh, that's incredibly expensive, but no. That's what we're doing. Screw you guys. Yeah. I need to come back to that screen later and make sure that oh, man. somebody's not doing it on purpose. Speaking of wheels that haven't been invented... This was a while ago, and I can't remember exactly which culture it was, but it was a, a group of people living in the Andes when they came in contact with others from the outside world. Like, one of the big deals was that they had not invented the wheel. Or, like, they kind of had. The thing is that in the Andes, um... I don't know if you've ever really considered what it's like living on a big pile of cliffs, but wheels are not terribly helpful when stairs are everything, you know? Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> like, they are not terribly helpful. Oh, is it a society that invented uh, that, you know, that seat that gets ratcheted up staircases no, no. that little old people need. They just had llamas do first. everything. They just had llamas do everything. They were like, wheels, what are those? And it's not like they hadn't figured out wheels. It's just that they were a children's toy. Oh, oh that's cute. So they would that's like, cool. like kids would, would have little, like, have you ever seen those little wooden animals with wooden wheels that you drag around? Yeah. Like they're on a leash? Yeah. They had invented something like that. And like the kids would play with them. But if you had to move anything in the Andes, like... The only thing you can really do in, like, rocky, mountainous, crazy jungle to reliably create paths as an early society is you cut steps into the stone. Like, it stairs, people. It stairs all the way down. I think that these guys are just being obstinate now. Some Sormal? Yeah. They might be. Eh, they're doing it on purpose. <laughs> they're being unhappy on purpose. Yeah, they're just, they just <laughs> love the misery. <laughs> That's what they're about over there. Now, look at these these people here in uh, Gadanak. Mm -hmm. They're living the good life, slowly expanding towards the ocean. Am I overdoing it on production? I think I might be overdoing it on production a little. Yeah, that's a lot of people. 
It's three and three right now. That'll get it to three and two. Can I go two and three? Two and three. Okay, that does two and three. All right. Mm, why don't I set up a few things? And then we'll come back at the start of the, the next in-game turn. Okay. 